happy last six weeks. So let's talk a little bit about the essay um, for this first week of the last six weeks. Um, it's from an excerpt um, of a novel called The Beat Queen by Louise Erdrich. And um, the prompt goes like this. The following excerpt is from the opening of The Beat Queen, a 1986 novel by Louise Erdrich. Read the passage carefully, then write a well-developed essay in which you analyze how Erdrich depicts the impact of the environment on the two children. You may wish to consider such literary devices as tone, imagery, selection of detail, and point of view. So here is a really important tip. Um, if you want to boil down the prompt to the most important thing, find the word analyze, circle it, and then underline the rest of the sentence that follows it, just to the end of that sentence. Because if you do that here, you get analyze how Erdrich depicts the impact of the environment on the two children. You can ignore everything else about the prompt if you can focus in on that part. Um, the sentence that follows that, that tells you that you might want to consider literary devices such as this, this, and this, and this, we should really be ignoring that mostly. Um, that, that sort of tripped a lot of you up on the um, fasting feasting essay. There were quite a few essays where like there would be a paragraph about diction and a paragraph about imagery and a paragraph about syntax and that's just that's just the wrong approach. You want to make your paragraphs about concrete things. Make your paragraphs about characters. Make your paragraphs about settings. Make your paragraphs about important symbolic objects. Concrete things like characters, settings, objects. Um, don't make your paragraphs about T uh, techniques, right? Don't do that. So with this prompt, um, if we boil it down, it says, analyze how Erdrich depicts the impact of the environment on the two children. So to me, there's like three things uh, worth focusing on here. The environment, which in the case of this story is a town called Argus, North Dakota. And then the two children, who in this case are Carl Adair and Mary Adair. Okay. So a good approach um, is on your document to um, go and highlight in three different colors the details that relate to just the town, uh, the details that relate to Carl Adair, the boy, and details that relate to Mary Adair, the girl, in three different colors. And I would use that as a basis for my essay structure. <clears throat> Excuse me. So after you do um, your thesis paragraph, um, spend some time um, talking about, if, if it were my essay, I would spend a body paragraph just talking about the setting, just talking about Argus, North Dakota. And then I would spend a body paragraph talking about Mary Adair, though that's not going to be a very long paragraph because she's not very interesting. And then a paragraph talking about Carl Adair, who is way more interesting and kind of has the central, um, the most dramatic moment in the passage. If you've already read it, you know that he kind of is mesmerized by this beautiful tree that he sees in this really kind of bland place. and But then a dog attacks, and he breaks a branch from the tree uh, to fight the dog off, and then the tree eventually dies. So that's kind of the, the big event, um, and we want to save that big impactful moment for our last body paragraph. So um, I, here on mine, right, highlighted... Uh, setting stuff in one color, Carl stuff in one color, Mary stuff in another color. So some of the important details about the setting, the place. Um, we know that it's uh, cold and uh, even in the spring, it's North Dakota, um, and it's 1932. Um, and it's this kind of a cold, watery wind, right? Is one of those details that I highlighted. Um, and this is a farming town where they, they farm wheat, and this is during the Dust Bowl, um, but the topsoil hasn't blown off here in this town yet. So there's still newly tilled, um, good uh, growing soil, which is why Carl and Mary are there in the first place to farm. Um, so then there's a main street with dirt and planking, um, false front clabbered uh, storefronts, which are like kind of, um, you know, sort of uh, cheap wood facades. Um, and then the gilt letters in the window of the brick bank. Um, and then beyond the main part of town is a string of houses, weathered gray or peeling gray paint with dogs tied to their porch railing. So a little kind of run down, uh, some of those details suggest. But then there's this one beautiful tree 
uh, a weak scratch of light against the gray of everything else, tossed with a film of blossoms. So that's our, our final kind of important detail of the setting. So if we talk about Mary and the impact of the environment on her for a minute, um, we'll see that Mary is, is kind of um, dull and gray, just like most of the town is, right? Mary's like the town. Um, so uh, she's 11 years old, short and ordinary, uh, with a name which was square and practical as the rest of her. Um, and when the, the, they encounter the tree later in the passage, this beautiful thing that contrasts with the dull gray, Mary trudged solidly forward, hardly glancing at it, which tells us that she's not compelled by this little beautiful thing at all. She's just um, blends in with the environment around her. Um, she's, she's sort of like the town in that way, right? Um, she just blends in. She's a part of it. Um, Carl, though, stands out. Um, Carl... 14, hunched with his sudden growth, very pale, his mouth sweetly curved, his skin fine and girlish. Um, so, so that's sort of descriptive of him, right? He's kind of vulnerable and delicate looking. Um, and then when he sees the tree, though, it drew him with its delicate perfume. His cheeks went pink. He stretched his arms like a sleepwalker. And in one long transfixed motion, he floated to the tree and buried his face in the white petals. So he's compelled and mesmerized by the tree. He finds it beautiful. Carl is like the tree, right? He's he's like a he's he's more beautiful than his surroundings, um, and stands out in contrast to to everything around him, right? So if Mary is like the town, Carl is like the tree, right? Um, but while Carl is mesmerized by this tree, this dog attacks, right? And Carl breaks a branch from the tree to defend himself and his sister from this dog. So that gets to the kind of the big question that I hope that you can address in that last body paragraph of your paper. When you're talking about Carl and you're talking about his relationship to the environment, what does it mean that Carl breaks this tree that ultimately kills it, right? When he, when he breaks the tree, the tree dies. Mary notices, you know, later. So the dog, right, is a part of this environment, and it's hostile, and it attacks him, and Carl breaks this tree, this thing that kind of symbolizes him in some ways, and it destroys it. Um, the tree is destroyed um, in order to, to combat this hostile environment. So what does that say about um, the, the place for beauty um, in, in this world? And, and for Carl, right, who kind of represents that misfit beauty in this dull and gray place. And then when you get to your final conclusion, make sure you make it bigger than the thesis, right? Kind of talk about, um, about the vulnerability of beauty in the world, I think is the way that I would address my conclusion. All right, so that's all there is for this one. Um, if you guys have other questions, just comment on the assignment or uh, email me or remind text me or whatever you wanna do. Uh, if you guys are clamoring for a, a Zoom meeting, I suppose we can do that, but I hate Zoom. Um, but if uh, but if that's a thing that you think would help you, let me know and I'll get over my I'll get over my my own personal issues. Uh, and it would be great to see you guys again in, in the flesh. Um, I hope that your quarantine is going well. Mine is going fine. I miss you guys a lot. Talk soon.